As we go through life, we encounter various experiences that shape us into the person we are today. Now, some of these experiences come with valuable lessons, ones that we could have learned earlier. Unfortunately, you can't turn back time, but we can always share these lessons with others in the hope that they're going to help you avoid making these mistakes. So in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing some of the things I wish I learned earlier in my life that would have helped me to appreciate my life better. So whether you're just starting out in life or you're looking at ways of improving your current situation, I hope my discussion with Mark Creedon today will provide you with some valuable insights that you can apply to your own life. So let's dive into today's show and explore some of the key lessons that we should have learned earlier in life. Welcome to the Michael Yardney Podcast, where twice each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment, and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's authority in wealth creation through property, who has been voted one of Australia's top 50 most influential thought leaders. Life's a journey full of unexpected twists and turns, and sometimes we wish we'd known certain things when we were younger. So today I'm joined by Mark Creedon, founder of Business Accelerator Mastermind and the new CEO of the Metropole Property Group. And we plan to share with you a number of important things that we would have liked to know that would have changed our lives had we known them when we were younger. Hi, Mark. Hello, Michael. Good to be here. Now, Mark, you know I'm into artificial intelligence and I've been playing with the program chat GPT. So I asked it, well, what's the secret to a fulfilling life? And not surprisingly, the answer came back as an AI language. I don't have personal beliefs or experiences, <laughs> but I can provide you with some general insights into what experts and studies suggest makes a fulfilling <laughs> life. And that's really the topic of today, the stuff that we would have liked to know that would have made our adult lives more fulfilling. But it actually then did go on to say, living a fulfilling life's highly individual experience what works for one person may not work for another. However, some common elements that contribute to a fulfilling life include building meaningful relationships with family, friends, and community. Number two, pursuing activities and hobbies that bring you joy and a sense of purpose. Three, finding a work or career that aligns with your personal values and provides a sense of meaning and fulfillment. Next was fostering a sense of gratitude and mindfulness, practicing self-care and prioritizing physical and mental and emotional health. And the last thing was continuously learning and growing and setting personal goals. Now, Mark, I like this list. And interestingly, none of it had to do with money, did it? None of it had to do with how many properties you've got or how big your share portfolio is. Um, no. But what I'd like to talk about with you today is some of the lessons you and I would have liked to learn earlier on in our lives. So we would have appreciated the journey because it is a journey with lots of ups and downs. And so even though we're talking about a fulfilling life, you actually have to continuously make an effort. You've got to be committed. The rewards, if you get it right, can be immeasurable. So maybe the first thing I'd like to discuss with you is the concept of there are going to be mistakes. And you and I have both made significant mistakes in our life, in our personal lives, in our business lives, in all in our investing lives. So I think they're just a natural part of what we do. Well, I think they they are. They're definitely a natural part, but they're more than that, Michael, aren't they? They're actually, they're a positive part because we learn from them. I mean, show me somebody who has made mistakes and I'll show you someone who's never taken a risk or who's never actually dared to dream in lots of ways. So, you know, and you and I have met lots of people who, you know, we've thought, wow, they, they could just be so much more successful if they just failed. You've got to fail a couple of times to get some of that ego out of you. And we've seen that as we've had a long journey together over the years and seen this guy is going to fail because he doesn't understand what it's like to do that. By the way, they come out much better at the other Sorry, some come out much better at the other end. If you learn the lesson. Yeah, those, I was about to say those who learn the lesson. I guess the big thing, Michael, is you've got to be a bit kind to yourself, haven't you? Don't be too hard on yourself. Forgive yourself for making the mistakes and, and shortcomings. Like you said, you and I have certainly made them. And I guess we've learned to forgive ourselves so that we can take the lesson from the mistake and the more we take it, I think we do two things with the lesson. One, we don't repeat the mistake, hopefully. But two, we actually help others not to make that mistake. Well, in our 
role as mentors, you in business, me in the property and wealth field, that's an important part. So what we're really doing is going through some lessons you and I would have liked to learn earlier because I think my ego was, well, I know it was much bigger in the past <laughs> uh, when it probably didn't have the right to be. And now that it's got the right to be, I'm probably not as egotistical. So I should have learned that mistake earlier on. I think another mistake some people make is, Choosing a career based on what their parents have told them or what they think is right. I know when my kids asked what should they do, I actually said find a job you love, something that every day you come to work you're going to enjoy and then it's not a job. Now, that's hard when they were teenagers because they really didn't know what they wanted, but maybe that's the reason people are swapping jobs nowadays. Well, I think it is. It's interesting. I said the same thing to my kids. And if you look at my son, Nicholas, it's taken him till 25 plus to find that, but he, but he's finally found it. And I would hate to think that he'd spent his time, you know, working in a job that he hated or following a career and probably a bit like but you, he's Michael. he's blossomed I, since he's done that, hasn't yeah, he? I've noticed oh, that. Unbelievably so, because he actually, he wakes up and loves what he does. You know, focus on finding hard work you enjoy doing. One of the things that I talk about with our with our mastermind clients all the time, Michael, is that you know if you want to find something that is going to really impact your life and your business, it's got to be something you enjoy doing as well. Otherwise, it's just really, really hard work. Well, because there are going to be all those failures and those challenges. So if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get through them. It's what keeps you going. Another lesson I think I learned early in the piece, but I know others probably haven't, was the importance of investing in yourself, time, energy, money in yourself every day, continuously learning. I think it's something that I learned later than than I should have. Do you know, probably back in the days of the, of the big ego, I thought I knew it all, so I didn't need to go and listen to anybody. And there's no doubt that that, that that cost me. I wish I had spent that time. But now I love the idea of investing in myself and, and encouraging the people around us, Michael, to invest in themselves. You, you and I were just having that conversation this morning about some of the Metropole team and the importance of us helping them to invest in, in learning for themselves. Yeah. Well, you're a product of what you know, so the more time and energy you spend acquiring the right sort of knowledge, the right sort of experience, the more control you've got over your life in all sorts of ways. I guess the problem today is there's so much opportunity to learn if you go down the wrong path. I mean, once you ask Google a particular question, you're going to keep going down that rabbit warren, aren't you? And you're going to hear some wrong information. So be careful who you invest your time with. But do you mean everybody on Facebook isn't actually an expert? <laughs> no, Instagram as well. That's right. <laughs> okay. The next lesson I would have liked to learn earlier is explore new ideas and opportunities. I was very set in my ways. I was very determined. I worked really hard. And in fact, it ruined the first half of my life being too focused rather than seeing what's possible and sharing them with people that I cared about. Yeah, because, because I guess your life story really, Michael, is, is the culmination of unique experience, isn't it? So th the more that you have of those, then the, the deeper your life story becomes. Mm. I guess the next thing is after you've worked out all these things, become a master at something. You can't become a master at everything, but it's not hard to become a master, whether it is property investment or whatever area that you're wanting to study in because most people don't go deep into it. So if you read a number of books, listen to a number of audio books, listen to the podcast, be careful who you listen to and find a niche. You can become a master at it and better than others. Well, you can. I think it was Bruce Lee that used to say, I don't fear the man who knows a thousand moves. I fear the man who knows one move, but's practiced them a thousand times. Now, I hope my kids aren't listening to this. Actually, I do hope they are. But the next point I was going to discuss with you is the concept of speaking your mind. Look, people aren't mind readers, so you've really got to tell them what you're thinking. Communication is one of the skills that I've learned to improve on over the years. Also, I think part of this is not just speaking your mind when you're not comfortable with what's going on, but actually tell people, and I've done that because my parents didn't, my father didn't. I tell my kids I love them. I tell my kids I'm proud of them. I find a reason to say something to one of the team members of, hey, that was a good job. Well done. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, having this discussion with one of the directors of Metropole the other day, and we were talking about just some minor issues that were happening within within that department. 
But all of the issues, if you pared them down, all came back to a lack of communication. And it's amazing how many problems either at work or in your personal relationship, friendships, just come down to a lack of communication. So, you know, communicating with others, being willing to speak up. And, and as you say, even, even if it's a bit uncomfortable, I think it's a really important skill to learn. Sure. I think another important skill to learn that you and I have learned running businesses is taking swift action, making decisions and then acting on them. I mean, that's one of the traits of successful people that Napoleon Hill found, what was it, almost a century ago. Successful people know how to take action. Well, if you're going to seize new opportunities, you actually have to take action, Michael. So you can have all the knowledge in the world and you can done, have done all the research in the world. If you don't actually act on it, then that becomes largely useless, I think. That's a good point. So you've got to learn to do enough research to take correct action, but not allow paralysis analysis to uh, get you into trouble. Mark, the next thing I... Would have liked to learn earlier on, again, because I was very focused, maybe a bit too focused in the first half of my life, was to embrace change. And I was discussing this only earlier today with somebody who's an accountant and an analytical person, and lots of changes are happening in their life. And unfortunately, or I guess fortunately for their business, they don't like change, they like everything to be the same. But change is the only constant in life. I think it's an important thing to learn. Yeah, I think, Michael, the other thing is it won't always be easy or obvious at first, but in the end, if you can actually embrace that change, as you say, death, taxes and change are the, the real, only three guarantees we have in life. That's right. So I think part of the lessons I learned as I grew older was don't worry about what others think. For the most part, what they think doesn't matter. And the other thing is they probably don't think as much about you as, as you think they do. So this is in all areas of your life. I mean, with Instagram, with Facebook, you see the highlight reels and not, not all the bits on the cutting room floor. Keeping up with the Joneses is one of the reasons why people, when they earn more money, end up spending it all. So be comfortable with what you've got. Be happy with what you've got and don't worry too much about others. I always used to say to my kids when they were growing up, Michael, that you know other people's opinion of them is none of their business. And I think the more that you can, the more that you can apply to that. The other one is matter over mind. If they don't matter, you shouldn't mind. Ah, yes. Okay. I think one of the things that I would suggest to people, if we're going through a list of secrets to a fulfilling life, lessons that you'd like to learn earlier, was learn to manage your finances. Now, to be fair, that's something that I probably did pick up very early on in the piece. I'm not really sure where because I came from a poor background, but my parents did budget, but I learned to become financially fluent, actually not from my parents, but from my friend's parents who were wealthy. They owned investments and my parents didn't. They went on holidays and we weren't able to. In fact, I, my parents didn't have a car till I was about the age of eight. So I think it's important to understand money, become financially fluent. That's part of the reason that we do this podcast, to help educate people because the school system doesn't help people become financially fluent. And unfortunately, you learn some bad money habits. A lot of people learn bad money habits from their parents. Yeah, they do. Like you, I didn't. I didn't learn it from my parents. In fact, I probably didn't learn it till much later. I, I probably learned my. My parents used to budget, but they never taught me to budget. So it was one of those things where money wasn't talked about in the house. Money was tight. We knew that, but it was never talked about. So if money wasn't talked about, then managing money wasn't talked about. And so I had to go and try and and find other ways to. In fact, I learned money management the hard way, Michael. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people do when the money runs out before the month does. So we're going through a list of lessons that we're hoping you're going to get some benefit from. Now, not all of these are going to apply to you, but some of them may. Some may apply to somebody you know. So if you're actually finding this useful for you, your friends, your kids, tell somebody else about this podcast, the Michael Yardney podcast, because we don't only talk about property. The theme of it is property, investment, success, and money, because I think they all go hand in hand. Now, Mark, talking about podcasts, you've been an integral part of this podcast for a long time, but you've got your own podcast now, Mastermind for Business. Tell us about that. I have, Michael. It's a podcast which is in, going to come out once a week, 
And every week, myself and my guests are going to be talking about the things that you can do in your business so that you can build a business which is a lot less reliant on you. So you actually have a business and not just a job. Well, I know a lot of people listening to this podcast are business people and others are considering getting in business. So wherever you listen to podcasts, hey, wherever you're listening to this, and it will be out by the time you listen to this, Mastermind for Business with Mark Creedon. Now, why are you qualified to do that? Well, let me say why rather than ask you, because you've been my business coach for a long time. I've seen it to the point where I've referred a lot of clients to you. It was then eventually uh, you were looking after the coaching the directors of Metropole. You became my business partner. Now you're the CEO. So you're actually not a theorist. You actually, you never were, but you're very practical. But you eat your own cooking. Yeah, I, it's not my first radio. I think the, the runs are on the board, Michael. So, um, And the other thing, too, is it's something I really – talking about you know being passionate, finding things you do, something I love doing, and I'm very yeah. passionate about it. And that, that, makes a, that makes a huge difference, I think. Well, I think one of the things that successful people have learned and one of the lessons that are important is surround yourself with positive and supportive people. And that actually works in a number of different ways. So you can listen to them on podcasts and you can read their blogs. But another part of it, Mark, is actually being in a room with them, even if it's a virtual room. And that's one of the things that Business Accelerator Mastermind, our joint business does and where your podcasters, I guess, evolved from, that it's important uh, who, who you hang around with. Community is vitally important. The, the reality is, I was going to say, Michael, in, in business, it can be a bit lonely. But, but let's be honest, in life, it can be a little bit lonely. And, and you, you can be lonely in a room full of people. But if you've got people around you who are your people, you know, people who think like you, people who are positively focused, people who are there to lift you up and not compare themselves to you and try and drag you down, it, that's just, that's enormously benefit. You know, positive, supportive people who believe in you, your dreams, you'll just find it so much easier to achieve your goals. And I was just thinking, that's certainly what we do in, in Mastermind. But it's also what Wealth Retreat is really about, Michael, isn't it? Yes, it is. And by the time people listen to this, there will actually still be about one, one and a half weeks before Wealth Retreat. And if you want to get in a room with already very successful business people, entrepreneurs and investors, hey, don't count yourself out if you're not where you want to be yet. Don't compare your Chapter 35 with my Chapter 70. What I'm suggesting is go to wealthretreat.com.au and Register your interest and we'll have a chat with you. And if there is a spot still available, because we're pre-recording this a couple of weeks beforehand and there aren't many spots available, it always sells out. We'd love to have you there with the best faculty Mark and I could put together. So if you hang around with successful people, that can have a huge impact on your life. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with negative people, with pessimists, it's really going to be hard to stay positive. It's going to be hard to stay motivated, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it, it is. And I think that, you know, one of the things I've always tried to do, Michael, is to actually distance myself from those people who bring me down. I've had friends over the years that fall into that category. It doesn't mean I stop being friends with them. It just means I'm very, very uh, frugal or careful with the time that I spend with them, and I'm very limited in in what we discuss. Makes sense. Now, as we go through this list, another one I'd be suggesting people consider is be willing to take risks. Life's full of risks. Now, taking calculated risks can lead to rewards. So I'm not saying do foolish things, but I think you've got to be open to doing things in a different way and trying new things. Because as we said a bit earlier on, Mark, the only thing that's constant is change. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think you, you actually have to uh, take chances, try new things. I mean, a, apart from the benefits that it will bring in that if you take some risks, you will, you'll move closer to your goals. But life's also about experiences, Michael. It is, as you said at the outset, it's a journey. And imagine if the journey was one which was just constantly vanilla, where you never took a risk, where you never tried new things. Geez, it'd be horribly boring, wouldn't it? It would. So also a lesson that I learned later in life was practice self-care. Take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. It was really more physically. I didn't eat well. I didn't exercise. You know, things are very different. COVID actually, I think in some ways made me exercise more. Having Lincoln made me exercise more. I used to I guess I didn't sleep enough. I used to set the alarm clock and I tried to burn the, burn the candle at both ends. I've learned the importance of sleep, Mark. Yeah, self-care. I was, I, in fact, I was recording a podcast session this morning, Michael, but I spoke about the things that you should be focusing on in your business and I shared 
the areas, the five areas that I focus on in mine. And one of those is actually about self-care is, is I, I monitor how many free days a month I have, how much time I spend actually investing back in me, looking after myself, exercising, eating well, sleeping, doing, doing all of those things. It just makes a huge difference in your, in your positive mindset. And in then of course, leading to achieving the goals that you're setting out to achieve. Sure. One of the themes that comes through almost every of my shows, or definitely the mindset messages, is in learn to appreciate the good things that are happening in your life, to actually practice gratitude, to focus on the positives. It's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, to look at all the negatives, all the terrible things that are happening, but by positively practicing gratitude. And I've said it before, before I go to sleep every night, or after I've turned off the lights, I think about what are the things that gave me pleasure, what's the most exciting things that happened in the day, and it's not the next deal, and it's not the money, it's usually spending time with my grandkids or my wife, and in the morning I actually think about three things I'm grateful for, and I'm not allowed to think about what I thought about yesterday, I've actually got to come up with some new ideas, um, I think it keeps me grounded, and it keeps me focused on what's truly important. I think it's a great exercise. I do mine in the mornings. I practice gratitude along the lines of what am I grateful for, what's been positive. But Michael, I also look at what's gone wrong and then and then I actually practice gratitude for the lesson that I've got from that. So if something doesn't go right for me one day, the next morning I think, okay, what was that lesson that, that I was trying to learn, that I need to learn from that and be, and be grateful for that lesson because it'll stop me making that same mistake again. But it's also because there is, there is actually value in, in appreciating the fact that you've had the opportunity to learn that lesson. Right. Well, the opportunity to learn is actually a good one because to continue on with because I believe it's really important to keep learning, to keep growing throughout your life. And I think a lot of people forget this. So what we're really talking about is the secrets we would have liked to know earlier in life, or we're sharing with others, even though we knew some of these, um, because it's going to help others get a more fulfilling life. And I know some people leave school and they think that's the end of their education. Wrong. It's only the beginning of it. So read books, seek out new experiences, do courses. There's always something new to learn, no matter how old you are. And interestingly, there's somebody coming to Wealth Retreat who is in her late 70s. She's got a professional career and a number of licenses. She actually got over 30 properties, but she still wants to learn. She still wants to grow. By the way, that's why she's so successful at where she is already, I think. Oh, absolutely. And might it be great to have her at Wealth Retreat, not just for her to learn from all of us, but for all of us and everybody there to learn from her as well. Yeah. Well, we know that Bridget's come 14 years in a row and she's in a similar category. So I think both these ladies are going to learn a lot from each other. And people would say, why does somebody come back 14 times? Didn't you teach them right? And it's because even though the questions are the same, the answers are different. So these are very successful people, both in their 70s, very big portfolios, who haven't stopped. So uh, I, th- I think last year you gave me the hospital pass of walking on stage after Bridget had spoken. That was a fa- that was a very very tough act to follow. Let me tell you. Sure. So a couple more lessons before we we finish off. Don't be afraid to ask for help when needed. Is I think one that's necessary to listen to to learn, particularly for males. Look, not everyone can do everything, and some of us, as we said before, have got a big ego. There's no shame in asking for help, is there, Mark? No, in fact, more than that, I I think asking for, for help is a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength, I should say, not a sign uh-huh. of weakness. Not asking um, for help is a sign not, of weakness. Absolutely not asking for help is a sign of weakness. I was having a conversation with somebody, Michael, who specialises in in mental health and well-being in the workplace the other day, and I made the comment that, that you know, ladies ladies are, are much better at it than we blokes are. They'll share their feelings, they'll share their emotions, and I think it's something that we blokes need to learn to do a whole lot better because there's, there's an enormous amount of value in it. So again, it's not just emotional. If there's other areas in your life you need support, don't be afraid to ask your boss, your work colleagues. Asking for help is a sign of strength, as we said. Part of this comes back to, I think, the tendency that we compare ourselves to others, which we shouldn't. And we spoke about not worrying too much about what other people think. But I guess part of the reason you don't ask for help is you're wondering, well, what are they going to think of me? And Maybe I'm not as good as them. Well, that's right. I think sometimes if we don't, if we compare ourselves to others, we do feel like we're falling behind, or or we feel like we're we're good enough. And and yet, when you look at 
at the people around you. Now, everybody's got their own unique path in life. And you actually don't need to measure up to anybody else's standards. There's this great saying, uh, Baz Luhrmann produced this song called The Sunscreen Song. And, and one of the lines in it, he says, is that the journey is long, the race is long, and at the end of the day, it's mostly with yourself. Hey, that's right. That's right. So maybe the last lesson we should talk about then is believe in yourself. Believe in your abilities. You've got the power to achieve great things if you're willing to work hard and stay committed. So things don't come easy in life, but don't let self-doubt hold you back if you believe in yourself and go after your dreams. And I know that's the thing you and I have been as parents and grandparents teaching our kids and our grandkids, the importance of self-belief and uh, being proud of what they've achieved. Yeah, and I think that's that's a nice point, Michael, to wrap into all those other things because how you continue to believe yourself and believe in yourself is to surround yourself with positive people, to constantly learn, to ask for help. So all of those lessons, you know, a good portion of those that we've already spoken about relate to this because Let's face it, we all suffer from the imposter syndrome at some stage. We all think we're not good enough or we don't have something of value to add. But if we can surround ourselves with the people that give us that support, then um, you know that will dissipate quite dramatically. Well, one way business people do this is being part of the Tribe of Business Accelerator Mastermind. And we hinted at that earlier on. That's the program that you run for successful for- business people. So maybe we should finish off just by explaining what this great opportunity is for people who are in business or in professions, how they can work with you to help them not feel so lonely. So Business Accelerator Mastermind is a business coaching program. It's both one-on-one and group programs. So they get to spend one-on-one time with me, with Caroline, with you, with other people in our faculty. But equally importantly, I like to think people come to the program for that but they stay for the community. And so by the community, I mean that they get to they get to communicate and work with all of the other people in the program. So what we get, Michael, is we get this shared wisdom because there's some pretty clever people in that program, but they get this collective momentum. So that's, that's how it works. And it's really designed for people who are already successful, but just feel like they're trapped. They've become a slave to their business and love to get that time, control and freedom back. Well, what I've noticed is a lot of people, when they join the program, do get more time. Interestingly, they get more money, but not because they're working harder, because they interestingly get a bit of time because you teach it. Now, are there secrets to all this? You know, you get all these books with secrets. No, they're actually well known, but you need somebody to see your blind spots. You need a coach and a mentor to guide you and to hold you accountable. So it's a combination of the tribe, the group doing it as a group, and also you and Caroline saying, hey, you actually committed to do this to yourself, for you, for your family, for your business. The benefit of that, the success of that's immeasurable. So I'm going to leave a link in the show notes. And if you'd like to share the same business coach that I have for well over a decade, and I haven't outgrown you. You seem to be growing faster than me. So that even though mine needs, and I have a number of coaches in a number of areas, as I know, as do you. So uh, uh, th- that's, that's, I'm going to leave a link in the show notes, as I said. And why not share Mark Creedon as your business coach at Business Accelerator Mastermind? So there we go, Mark. We've discussed a number of things we would have liked to have known earlier, or that even if some of us didn't, if you or I knew it, we would hope our listeners would just get an insight to make their lives more successful. I look forward to our monthly chats, and I look forward to hearing Mastermind for Business podcast with you every week, wherever good podcasts are found. Thanks, Michael. These chats are always good fun. Now here's Michael's mindset message. Remember, a change in your thinking will lead to a change in your life. In today's mindset message, I'd like to share a lesson I learned from watching a movie a couple of weeks ago. I watched an old American sporting movie, a baseball movie. It was called it a league of their own. And in one memorable scene, one of the team players, Dottie Hinson, tries to quit the team telling her manager, who happened to be Tom Hanks, in the movie he played Jim Duggan, she said to him, it's just too hard. Duggan replies, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would be doing it. The hard is what makes it great. Now, that made me think this is exactly the same thing with life, with your property investments, with your business. Don't let anyone tell you that being a successful property investor isn't hard. It is. Don't let anyone tell you that building a profitable business isn't hard. 
It is. Don't let anyone tell you developing financial freedom isn't hard, because it is. But on the other side of that challenge, on the other side of that difficulty, that's where the reward lives. And those that battle through the challenges get to reap the rewards. What kind of rewards? Well, look, there's too many to mention, but a few ones could be more choices in life, the ability to go to work because you want to, not because you have to, and of course the financial rewards that come with success, whatever that means for you, whether it's knowing that you don't have to worry about money for your family or the ability to make a significant contribution to charities of your choice, or even if it's just to buy yourself a nice present, a reward. All those rewards, though, aren't given. They're earned, and it is hard, but it's worth it. So the next time you want to quit when facing your your first, your second, your hundredth, your fiftieth, I don't know, thousandth challenge, just remember what that rascal in the movie Jimmy Duggan said. It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would be doing it. The hard is what makes it great. So now go out there and be great, and don't worry about stumbling along the way. Well, thanks for spending the last little while with me, and I hope you got some benefit from this show. If you did, and you know somebody else who'd also benefit, please tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. There's a share button on every podcast app. On Apple Podcasts, there's three little buttons down the bottom, press it and share it, or just tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. I hope you're going to be doing them a favour, and you'll definitely be doing me a favour and helping me in my quest to make as many people as possible financially literate. Now, there's ways of catching up with me between these shows. Just look for Michael Yardney on social media, or why not join my private Facebook group? Go to Facebook and look for the Property Update Facebook group. And I have a way of saying thank you to you for subscribing to this podcast. Go to podcastbonus.com.au. There'll be a link in the show notes, podcastbonus.com.au, where you can get a bunch of ebooks and reports. My way of saying thank you. And when you've got time, why not listen to some of the old podcasts? There's individual lessons in each of those that I think would be helpful for you. I'll be back again real soon. In the meantime, have a great week. Make it a great week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. If you like what you heard and don't already subscribe, you'll find us on iTunes or on your favorite Android app as the Michael Yardney Podcast. Watch out for our next show, which comes to you twice a week, and you'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 30 minutes. To get more of Michael's thoughts, go across to www.propertyupdate.com.au and sign up for his daily morning briefing and you'll hear from not only Michael, but a group of leading property success and money experts. And just a reminder that the information you heard in this show today is general educational advice and not specific investment advice, as we don't know your personal circumstances. If you're looking for specific advice, why not ask the team at Metropole to help you?